Wilson is back. I was just saying, I was on a meeting there, I was just saying that, uh, you know, we, we, we get into these, this business to act, um, and then when you go and you do what you love for a, a job, you start missing this a lot more. You start missing hanging out with your buddies and hanging out with you guys, and that's not a word of a lie, a word of a lie. Yes, it's nice to be able to talk about oneself all the time on the stage, but uh, it's also this community. It's, it's, it's like a drum. It's like it's amazing. Um, the SBA family is pretty amazing. Started to know people's names. It's like, hey, there's cousin Alice. There's uh, cousin Claire. It's just like it's cousin, cousin, cousin Claire. She's more like a sister, I think, at this point. Are you here? Not even here. That's that's typical sister behavior. They don't turn up for your birthday. They don't turn up for Christmas. Will we take a question? Hey, Adam, what do you think? Should we take some questions from the audience? Well, I don't know, baby. Let's do it. Okay, you first. Who do we have? Hello. Hello. My name is Tova. Um, Tova. Tova. Tova would it be? Yes. Hi, Tova. Hi. Um, I'm the girl who asked you to use my hair as a mustache in the photo. That was it. How did it turn out? Great. Oh, awesome. Um, <laughs> can I just say the photo ops today were bloody fun? What? Off the hooks. Great ideas today. They so were, we had some real. I I I did a, a, a perverted thing at one point. Uh, <laughs> Kind of stalkery, kind of creepy guy. Just be you, basically. So I'm being myself. So I was at first. I broke into character. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, Tova. Beautiful name, by the way. Thank you. And beautiful mustache. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my question is, I am still incredibly pissed off that we never saw Sam's reaction to catch killing Magda, and I want to know how you think he'd react if you told him. So Sam's reaction to me killing Maggie would not be catch by uh, David and Jones. Very different people. Very different people, folks. Um, well, I, I'm very interested to be, I don't know if they'll ever go that far back. Because Sam, I mean, Sam did that soft heart, but I think that they're toughing him up a bit, too, don't you think? Don't you think he's getting a little bit harder, especially at the end of season 12 when he's you know, rallying the troops and stuff like that, and oh, right, this is the 13th. I mean, you're seeing him get, like, way more of a Dean-esque sort of energy, I guess. He's not as, as, uh... He's smoky. So, well, no, you know, sweet. Like, you know, sweet, and you've seen all the gray and all the new ones. I think that would make him really, really angry, don't you? Yeah, I think, I think so. Kill your character off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd love to see that. Wouldn't that be interesting to see Sam smoke catch in season 14? Yes. I mean, one person I know you can't have to be more than Sam. No, I would love for Mitch Davis. Mitch Davis. <laughs> With his Peaky Blinders hat, maybe I'll look at Peaky. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely like to see you, like, as a ghost. As some, like, weird ghost. From, like, I, a Dickensian ghost with chains. I think the whole, the entire Warner Brothers family has blocked me on all of the, the social media. Like, for all the banging. Thank you for your question, Thanks, Tova. Tova. Thank you for your hair. Hi there. It, it's really hard to see you today, by the way. Just so you know, like it's really hard. But we'll try. Hi, buddy. What's up? How you uh, doing? This is actually for you, by the way. Uh, okay. What? I uh, ask you about your state fund commercials. Oh. oh yeah. Some people watch football, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently there's an Americans who watch football, Adam. News, this is just it. <laughs> it's not football, it's pro ball. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's good. Uh, I just want to know what it was like for you to do a commercial versus doing a TV show, and what it was like working with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Oh, so, what a hero. So the question, yeah. By the way, did you see that game one? Where, where the Packers are? I don't know if you're a Packers fan, but if you oh, watch it. God. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we're not getting into that. I will tell you this. When you're on set, um, it really is, and we were just talking about this earlier, it's usually about scale and it's usually about time. Everything else is relatively the same, right? So if I'm doing a three week Christmas movie or if I'm doing like seven days doing multiple spots with Aaron Rodgers, the kind of the, the, the scale is relatively the same. Now when you get on big movies like Adam is just doing right now, uh, time slows down, but essentially from 
from setting up to action to cut, it's the same job, would you say? Absolutely. It, it, it kind of doesn't matter what the medium is, as long as you're shooting stuff and you've got a crew, it's the same job. Now, totally, because I come from an improv comedy background, they kind of just let me loose, and hopefully there's going to be about 50 more pieces of content over the span of the season. And hopefully they say there's going to be like a blooper reel that they're going to release. And it's basically, the game became, see if I can make Aaron Rodgers crack. So, they really let me just go Just keep on. him in the knee. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. We're like, Dave, you're out here, buddy. But uh, he was such a great sport, and he's actually a real, like, kind of, like, a student of comedy. So we actually had a shorthand really quickly. Like, he's kind of dry and stoic, and he's kind of got that wry smile. And you're like, and he's just an amazing specimen of a man. I mean, you show up, and he's just got this power and this air about him. But he was such a bro, such a cool hang, and, like, we just started snapping jokes. And when I made him laugh the first time, it was on. So it just became the game is... He's going to be stoic and the straight guy, and I'm just going to do runs, you know, improv runs at him. And it, like every time we crack, it was a great day. So we just had a ball, and hopefully there's going to be a lot more fun stuff for you to see. So thanks, thanks for asking. It was a great job. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah. We let we like riff like that. It's fucking awesome. Oh, just like five minute takes, you know, just all improv and just trying to get at the guy. That's what it's all about. Because yeah. you only like you only only get like thirty seconds of actual acting time in any given uh, scene or shot you're doing. And, like, if you ever just let me riff, you know, it's amazing. Hi! Hi, how are you? How's it going? Good. Uh, my question's for David. Oh, for <laughs> Welcome back, Adam! Welcome back! <laughs> it's Deja Vu all over again! Back on tour, there we go. Aww. This is what he does, our little street urchin. I don't! <laughs> So here's the thing with Catch and Dean and the Winchesters in general. I don't think he ever had a personal beef with Dean or Sam, and certainly not Mary. Well, he had beef. Jeez. Wow. Listen, you should, you should just examine my panel in India, but it was fun. Uh, to answer your question, though, the only time Ketch actually got personal with those guys was when he, uh, you know, he was listening in on them, and they were making fun of him. And, and, and then you see Ketch's little sweet little feelings get hurt. That's what he's... <laughs> Listen. Catch is a little damaged boy underneath all the bravado and all the cars and the suits. And I know you don't believe that. I don't believe the slightest! Listen, damaged boy. When we used to get drunk. When we used to get drunk and cuddle at Kendrick's, it didn't remind me so much. I think you saw me because I didn't cuddle to you at Kendrick's. That's your problem. Well, that's true. There's a lot of repressed something that is there. That is true. He was never been loved. I but, know. Yeah, to your point, though, he, I, he's always had mad respect for the Winchesters, and that, that whole scene where they're drinking scotch was never about, like, I'm your enemy. I want you to make me my... I want to be your friend. You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you. But come join us. I mean, that was a seduction of two killers, basically. And then, when he's trying to find purpose again, after he got his own bullet in the head, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I know what it's like. But survived. What? <laughs> Ish. Ish. But change, thanks to the lovely Rowena. Um, when he was trying to find redemption or purpose or, or a cause again, I think that's when you started to see, again, the other side, the flip side of that relationship. Um, so yeah, I mean, I... I I love the counterbalance, the counterpuntal sort of yin yang of Catch and Dean. I think it's really interesting storytelling. I hope you enjoy it yourself. Thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it. Hi. Hi. I'm uh, Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Uh, my question is um, if you like, uh, as we know, a lot of characters do come back on the show. So let's say Adam's character does come back. Please. Woo! Would you like? Maybe I'll show up. Right? Would you like to see a reunion between Ketch 
and your character? <laughs> yeah, no, I would. What a like, reunion! I, I would like to see a reunion, all right. <laughs> yeah. I like, you know, I would like to kill Ketch using the seven deadly sins. <laughs> um, I don't know, like, that's the great thing about making TV and making movies and making makes you believe that you can... I come back as a different person altogether, you come back as a ghost, and especially with this show, um, but, uh, I'd like, I'd like them to be actually pals. Really? Yeah, that's controversial. Uh, that is very controversial. Well, I Especially like, coming from you. I mean, what I, what I mean to say is, <laughs> I'd like them to be pals. For a minute. <laughs> and then I lure you into a false sense of security. Well, <laughs> Perhaps. I'm there for this. We have to relive our, relive our days at the uh, Kendrick School. Those late night court games. Soggy biscuit. Family! 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 So I'm yeah. no, I'll come back sometime soon. I'm scandalized right now. <laughs> well, I felt a little bit out left out of, uh, of yourself and Dr. Hess's late night jaunts in the, uh, well, here, I will, go, nice. I will go on record saying there was a lot of not healthy mischief going on in Kendrick, so I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. I mean, it's not a healthy place. Hey, Bevel, she was a school. Bevel, I know you know Bevel. You've been developing a lot of backstory here, my friend. <laughs> why, did you, why did you go to AO3 and flush it out? I, got... <laughs> I, mean, I think Adam wants to be a fanfic writer. Hi. We all learned a lot about Adam Fergus today. <laughs> Woo! He's back, baby. The night is just young. <laughs> it's oh. too long. Oh, wait. Is it tomorrow? Yes, it's tomorrow. Hi. I can't see I have lighting places. How are you doing? Good. Really happy to be here. I'm so glad to see you. Just because of your tweet. It's literally the only reason I made it work. Yes. You see, I make money from creation. Is this, is this, is this Cousin Kamara? Is this yeah. Kamara? Right? Cousin Kamara's here. Yeah, I guess. Okay. How are you doing? Great. Okay, me too. That's good. How's the chat going, guys? <laughs> Come on, go ahead. I don't like him. He's so rude. I love you both. I'm still Team Adam. Say? Yes, I love you both, but I'm still Team Adam. Yes! Uh -huh. If we have one here, it's so all good. That was Steve. It's ridiculous. What was he saying? David said he was Team Adam in Nashville. I think well, he was Team Adam in Nashville, really he was. He was on my back, literally. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Ah. Okay, um, my question is, what do you guys think your, like, Flashpoint universe would be, if that makes sense to you? If you watch PC, like, being on the Flash, his Flashpoint universe is when he goes back and he saves his mom from being killed. So, like, some decision that was made in your childhood or young adulthood that would completely have changed your life. Real life or his character? Wow. In real life? Real life. Oh gosh. Um, we went deep. Wow, nice. <laughs> you're, you're meaning like those those sliding doors moments in a in a person's life where like their life would have been very different if it hadn't been yeah. for this certain thing. Yeah. I was uh, I was very lonely and alone living in a very small rural town in northern Alberta, Canada. And uh, yeah. Yeah, all one of you. Uh, and that's fair. That, that's basically the population up there at that time. It was two. Um, and it was, uh, I was like an emo teenager, and I was like, had colorful hair, and I was like, flock of seagulls, and you know, like, like cure, listening to cure, the trying, like drawing in my journal. Thank God there was no social media back then. I thought there was only two people there. <laughs> I, I made up friends, I drew them, and I pasted them on my wall, and I talked to them. But anyways, getting to the flashpoint of my sadness, um, there wasn't a lot of outlet for uh, creativity or art uh, when I was up there. It was sort of like, uh, you know, you're on your own. Uh, then when my folks moved to uh, Calgary, Alberta, uh, for my last year and a half of high school, that's when I became my first professional gig as a singer-dancer at a place called Callaway Park. 
uh, which was basically I was uh, an amusement park singer dancer at the at the at the parks. That was my first job at 15. And I'll tell you what, that is a flashpoint because I was like, they're paying me for this more, please. <laughs> yeah, and then that's literally what sent me off on a on a career in uh, film and TV and theater. Um, was that, that 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 literally changing to a city where I could actually. You know, express myself and sing and dance and be a goofball. That's pretty cool. And I became an actor that, that summer. I don't know if, like, I, I, it's a good question, but I don't know if there's anything I would change. I've always thought that I would, uh, my dad, when I, when I finished school, I told my dad, I want to be an actor. My dad says, You do, do you? Good luck with that. <laughs> or if you want to go to proper college, I'll give you some money and you can go to proper college. So he basically blackmailed people like me, whatever you want. But I always figured I wanted, and so I never studied professional acting. I never studied to be a professional actor. I just learned as I, I got jobs, and I got jobs, I started doing theater, and I, uh, I learned all And that's stood me in very good stead over the course of my career. But I've always wanted to know what it would be like to go and immerse myself in college. Because I didn't exactly immerse myself in real college, let's be honest. But the interesting thing about your question is that I did a TV show in Canada years ago called Being Erica, and it was kind of, it was kind of the reason that that was kind of the main, uh, one of the main plot points was the doctor being the, the uh, all the character, the lead character, Erica. Sorry, I got the question. Sorry? Sorry, I got the question. Okay, cool. So basically, this, you do this show where the, the, the doctor is like a, 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 a psychiatrist that gives you the ability to go back into your past and change your regrets, any regrets you have. Um, had over the over the uh, course of your life, this, uh, monumental moments in your life, and although it didn't have the butterfly effect that would go on and change the rest of the world, um, they kind of cheated that part out, and uh, thankfully. Um, and uh, but, but it was really interesting because it was a moral story for every episode, and uh, I think one of the things that the, the show got across was that um, no matter you can't have regrets, it's important to remember them and remember those times and learn from them. But to go back and, and, and change something about your past, is, it, 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 um, because it's not physically possible, uh, it's, it, it, there's no point dwelling on it. It's, it's, it's important about learning from the mistakes you made and try not to make them over and over again, Adam. Over and over again. <laughs> Stop making those mistakes. But thanks a lot. It's a great question. Thanks, Adam. Nice. Thank you. Hey there. Hi, Adam. Hi, David. Hello. Hi. Happy to see both of you. Thank Happy to see you too. Um, David, I was wondering if you would ever consider recording maybe a song on the next Covers with Friends album that Jason does, and if so, Adam, what song would you choose for him to do? <laughs> uh, well, listen, I will go I anywhere. Do I do my my share. Share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? And I do. That's exactly the song I would choose for. Wow. To sex to fall this song. To sex to fall this song. To hang. Stop on my own, you know what I mean. And as we know, that, that would be totally in Jason Wayne's wheelhouse. He would love to cover that song. Um, oh no, man, I, I, I will go collaboratively wherever these folks uh, want to take me. So uh, honestly, I'm still a new kid on the block in terms of the convention circuit. So, um, but yeah, we're having a lot more fun. Collaborating and uh, you know, and, and by the way, who's going to quick karaoke here tonight? Just so <laughs> Did, are people starting to figure out or know the story behind the Make Me Bacon song? A little, yeah. See, so not not everyone. I'll just give you the you can find out the whole story. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. This song was totally dared and created by you folks, the Asian family. I did an improv in Rome two and a half years ago. And then Jason Mans did a follow-up little joke callback. And then this audience online told me and dared me to go make a song out of it. And so that's what the Making Big a Challenge is. It is an absolute song that I recorded, uh, a rock country <laughs> ballad, that was totally designed at one of these things and for you. So there's a challenge, come sing it with me, and we'll have a great time. And we raise money for Alzheimer's Foundation of America. So in the spirit, you guys made me do. I would never have done this on my own, but that's what I'm talking about, the power of the SBN family. I mean, my goodness, I'm doing charity, I'm 
writing silly songs, so anything is possible with you folks, man. So that's it. It's very, very true. It's amazing. And that's one thing that I, that I, um, I did think about when I was coming back to this panel was that, uh, as many, a few of you might have heard, there's a thing going around called the Bad Idea Tour. Yeah. It's a very bad idea, believe me. Didn't you just post a shirtless something on this? I, I was wearing a shirt. Uh, I, was, I hope he was not wearing a shirt until closer to the event. Well, I actually do some garden game. But, uh, <laughs> but so, so for those of you who don't know what a bad idea tour is, uh, we're, we're running, um, uh, we're raising money for Adam for to, to help starving children. But it was Misha's idea that we'd run a marathon. <laughs> Jason Manth looks fantastic. <laughs> Or something. It was amazing. Rob Benedict looks amazing. So it's myself. I put myself first. So it's uh, Derek, Jensen, Nisha, Jason, Rob, uh, Rachel, and myself are doing this marathon. And um, so if anyone's doing nothing around the 25th of November and want to see some old men look like beetroots and tomatoes and stuff by mile four, um, <laughs> exactly. Get hot just thinking about it, bro. He's <laughs> like, come on to Seattle. We're gonna do. Whoa! Did you blow your mic? I just blew my mic. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's okay. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Gracious. You might need to sanitize it. Hello! How's it going? Hi, Colt. Hi, Colt. Um, so I'm an actor as well, but I don't have a lot of experience. Okay. Have there ever been like a role that you've got? and then like within the first week of doing the role you regret it totally because I did The Walking Dead for two years and I was a zombie and within the first week I had already spent total 48 hours in the makeup chair yeah 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 and the first day I got a gallon of blood dumped on me <laughs> and it pricked places that shouldn't be freaking yeah oh the glamour and then it was mint flavored so it was sticky oh and nice and they were like okay I'm gonna kill you, and I have like my 30 seconds of fame. And they're like, okay, now you can go back to the makeup chair and do it all over again. Yeah, become a different zombie. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's interesting that you did it for two years. It's, like we were talking about it, Dave uh, just touched on it recently. Acting, the fun part about acting is actually the acting part. But there's so much, like Michael Caine, I say this quote all the time. Michael Caine says famously, pay me for the waiting around, the acting's for free. Because, you do so much waiting around, you do so much sitting in a makeup tra trailer or makeup chair, um, getting prosthetics put on. Um, but there's never, to answer your question, there's never been a role that I've done that I've done it with I think, I think the thing about, you know, you watch, you know, if you see someone playing, uh, Anthony Hopkins playing Hannibal Lecter, or uh, think of it like, I don't know, any bad guy that plays a bad guy, they'll never say, I hate that guy, that guy. So you gotta find something within whatever you're doing, like whatever, and this is a really good exercise for something, even uh, getting killed as a zombie 18 times in The Walking Dead. You, you find something within yourself, find something that you can make sense of why you're in that present moment in time. Um, I think that's where you get the, that's why I get the enjoyment out of it anyway, you know, yeah, like you, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, also, I mean, it's kind of a metaphor for life too. It's like how you approach the work is how you approach life, right? Like, you're, you're gonna have bad days. Um, the practice of gratitude and being in the moment is like trying to find the thing that's good today. And that's hard. That's really hard some days. And the same thing on sets. Now to be fair though, in theater, if you're a theater person where you don't get paid as well, that's the purest form of acting. Where you can kind of... Can anyone take me seriously with this headband and suit? No. Like, yeah, I'm about <laughs> I, just, you know, I just got so self-conscious on the set. I was like, let's go into the depth of theater while you're wearing pure velour. But seriously, like, theater is probably the purest form, and I would argue the most satisfying form. For sure. Right? And you're not waiting around, you have half an hour of prep or whatever, and then you just go and you're out of the gates. But the problem with is, in this economy, there's not a ton of ways to make theater. So you do, sometimes you do an art gig for yourself and that fills your soul, and other times you just roll around in the mud and get blood dumped on you, and you get your paycheck, and then you just try to find that thing that, that works for you. But hey, this whole notion of regret, I think, too, is you've got to just own your whole story, and then, like you said, you've got to learn your lessons and hopefully get and those on. lessons and, and keep going forward. And, and the thing about it is, yeah, that's a good question. And, uh, the thing about it is, you could do a play 
with three people here this afternoon. You can buy three copies of Speed the Plow or uh, something that really moves you as a piece of theater. And that's, that's acting, that's what it's all about. That's what, you know, that's as much fun doing that with your friends as you'll ever get on any film set. Okay, you'll work with some stars or you might, but, but the actual learning something and giving it your all, you can, you can do it for free. And that's the thing, Adam, too, like, this generation, they, they want to start out acting. I wouldn't worry about going to school just yet for it. We got iPhones and, and editing software. Like, you can make your own movies. If you want to make your own TV show, you can go and make your own TV show and write it and produce it and post it yourself for next to nothing. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, doing that, creating your own content, you'll, you'll never learn anything more in the biz than actually trying to, you know what a genius thing is to do? Try to find a scene, like one of your favorite scenes in the movies, and go recreate that scene. And just try to act as well as you can, and produce it as well as you can, and light it as well as you can. You know, like that, uh, that those guys who did the Indiana Jones movie? Like, the, the, the fan movie, ever seen that documentary? Oh, it's so worth your time, because it's just people trying to recreate something they love so much, but in that process, they become complete and utter filmmakers just by doing so. That's awesome. And you got iPhones, you got editing software, you can do it. It's just great. Do it for the Well done. Keep on trucking. Hey guys. I have to keep fighting. My question would be, if you guys yourselves could meet your characters, what would you say to them? If I met my character, I would be like, Hello, Mr. Ketch, please don't kill me. I'd be like, Man up, Nick, for fuck's sake! Look behind you! It's good advice. Sage advice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Hello! Holly. Hiya, Holly. I just want to say first, Adam, I love your accents. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I call thanks to my mother. Hey, well, if that's my own advice, if you call me like that, well, that you know even harder what I'd say, because it all speaks to that old woman then, where I won't beat me up with the kids to snap out of Why do I crave lucky charms right now? <laughs> yourselves in any role in any TV or film ever made, who would you choose to be? Oh my god. Han Solo Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, I'm like over it for me. Like, that, that's my hero. That's Fun. my hero. Yeah, he's my hero too. Um, <laughs> fuck, that just killed me. <laughs> Go for Indiana Jones. Take that one. Well, hey, come on. Perfect opportunity for a plug right here. Can I plug my friend right now? He's like, can we talk about him? Yeah. He's working with Harrison Ford right now. And he told me that I would be a better Han Solo than getting paid jokes. I'm just saying. No, but it's funny, it's funny because he's my ultimate hero. I get to work with him, it's fantastic, but, but there's another guy I'm working with at the moment, and this is answering your question called Bradley Whitford. Um, Fanger, right here, or fanboy, whatever you want to call it. Like, I was just, my jaw hit four when I knew I was doing Steve Bloom. Um, and I'm a massive West Wing fan. I love the board when Eric's working before, I love anybody else in the world. I love the dialogue, I love politics, I'm like, it's just, I'm, I'm completely engaged, and I was literally just listening to everything he said like that. But I would like to play Sam Seaborn in the West Wing, I'd like to play Ron Rowe's character in the West Wing. Because I would like to work more with Bradley Whitford. Not that I don't love Rob Lowe, I love Rob Lowe. But, uh, has anyone seen the West Wing? Woo! <laughs> Sam is one of the coolest men on the planet. Um, and yeah, that's a super question. And I've got maybe a list of 20 or 30 other characters that I love to play as well. But, uh, um, yeah. Sam Seaborn, that's good for me. Thank Thanks, you so Holly. much. Awesome. Hi. Well, one of them is watching Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> I have no opinion about yes, that. Um, and yeah, I obviously saw you on there before Supernatural because one came first. Oh, is that um, okay? Yes, so, and I, yeah, that was my recommendation. I was like, who is that? Um, so, what was your favorite thing about filming the Christmas movies? And um, do you have any upcoming this year? Uh, I don't have a new Christmas movie. I have a new uh, romantic comedy with Jody Sweeten. Does anyone know Jody Sweeten? <laughs> Um, I think again, it's a sweet romantic comedy kind of 
kind of thing. Um, one, of the, one of the things I love about them, I mean, obviously they're formulaic to some degree and the scripts are, uh, you know, they're, they're feel good, they're feel good, right? They're holiday movies, it's, it's like a warm hug. But I like, and that's what I was really curious when I entered this fandom, um, is how much family and kindness and heart is at the root of them. And I think in this day and age where everything has gotten edgier and cheekier and, and sort of, you know, trying to get a reaction, there's nothing wrong with getting back to the principles of love, kindness, and family. Yeah, like, right. I, no, I have no problem saying that without any sense of Woo! spirituality. No, I, agree. I mean, I mean we, are, we are living in pretty caustic times that we see if you turn on the news. And to make something that makes people feel good, I have no problem with whatsoever. So that's, for my heart and for my love, to just get behind falling in love with someone is a beautiful thing to do. All of my co-stars have been amazing. The other thing I really like about it, though, is, is what you said, and what, it ties into the other question, which is about, oh, well, you know, people could judge it. You're like, oh, you're in such a cheesy Christmas movie. How stupid. Whatever. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> And you're like, guess what? Yeah, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. That's fine. You know, you don't, we can, we're allowed to all have taste and we don't have to like things. But what I like about him as an actor is you get these scripts, and they're not the most rich, deep acting scripts, my cookie baking competition where I try to figure out who stole my cookie recipe. <laughs> Where's the movie? Where's Catch? <laughs> This chick stole my cookie recipe, man. How much is it going to cost? <laughs> uh, very different movie. But I make a long story short. Um, it's, I like, and we shoot them in three weeks, so it's a very fast shooting schedule. We're doing eight and a half pages a day, whereas on a big feature, you're doing maybe a page a day. So just think of that scale. I see them as summer stock, kind of in theater. You have to really come with your homework done. You have to really try to make it real for yourself. And that is challenging sometimes with some of the dialogue. So I come with my improv improvisational sensibility and collaboration, and you try to make these things live a little bit, you know. And it's and it's challenging. It's it's actually hard. So again, you lean into the challenge of the thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you try to make it real, and you try to make it happy and fun and have a good time. So that's awesome. what I like. Awesome. And hopefully it comes through. So thank you. Yes, it will. Oh. oh, you want David over here? Is that what you think? <laughs> My question is for David. Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't realize how that was this close. Okay, well, thank you. You want me to go? You sure? Okay, let's go. Ask him one more. Who's the one? You don't? Oh, I have a question for you, David. Is it for who? For David? For me? For David. For fuck's sake. I'm just going to sit down over here, okay? Was the question, how does it feel to get you out of the face? Yeah. <laughs> it hurts. In, hold on a second, I mean, on the TV show. I really don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be really creepy. <laughs> Wait a second, David, are you joking to get you out of the face? Well, I bet. Mean, He's looking pretty put together for a guy with no brain. Um, it was, you know, I said this to Adam, it, it's never fun to die on TV because that means you're unemployed. So, I mean, that's the, that's the practical truth of the matter. I mean, on your iPhone, I like texted you right away. I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. I just, I'm so sorry. 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 I'm I'll never speak to you again. Um, that was fun, though. It was. I mean, that's the thing. You gotta lean into. You gotta lean into the story. And it was like it really was an impactful moment in season 12 for so many people. Um, I, you know. It was, it was a good buy. You know, I got shot. Here's the worst thing, actually, about getting shot in the head, is when it's not your last day. Yes. It's, right? Yes. It's the same with you. Because you're like, you're like, okay, I'm dead on the show. You have no sense you're ever going to come back. Um, and you're like, okay, this is the end of a great run. It's over. But then, it's, they don't plan it on your last day. So it's like your first day of the episode, you're like, okay, you're dead. And then you have to come back to work like, hey, oh, guys. I remember that oh, picture. Oh, you're right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that I'm dead. Yeah. That's, yeah. The part, that's the hardest part of getting shot in the head, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, the part of 
part of the bullet is pretty hard too. Uh, of course, they use the real bullet on your shoulder. That's why it was so believable. Uh, good question, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Hi. Yeah, Hi. thanks. My question, hi, I'm Joe. Hi, uh, Joe. My question is, how would it be if you were to go back into AU world, find Mick, and then both of you came back and met up with the Winchesters? I wonder, I wonder if like, that dynamic that would go. Let's, let's, let's feel this out for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. And for us, if Catch went back to the EU to go get alternative... Okay, that's not going to hear him, but then... Well, I would be as well. You're dead here. You're dead? You think alternate universe as well? No, no. Well, I guess that's what's happening. This is like, no, 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 I just happened to relax. I like just something to come Oh, you're southern in there, you are. I like that. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's it going? Oh, he was, uh, Mitch, how are you? Off the catch. I killed you on Earth. Come with me. <laughs>